Okay, I think we are live. Mandy and Kara's here from the Purposeful Woman podcast, and we haven't had one in probably, what, a month? Probably a month, yeah. 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 Wow. So we, we took some time off and for Christmas and the holidays and all that kind of stuff. So we are ready to get back to normal. Yeah. Right? Have some normalcy somehow, some way, however that works. But hopefully, as you are tuning in, if you would like to share it with somebody, please share um, this if you feel like that they can, um, you know, benefit from it. Yeah. Also, later on, we will have it on iTunes. And I see that I'm a little bit grainy, but as long as you can hear me, I think we're doing okay. Sorry. I guess who knows what the internet's doing but anyway so as long as you can hear me good um but again we are mandy and karis um amanda middleton.me and karis snyder.com if you don't know us hello and we are so glad that you are here we hope they stick around and we hope that you'll find something to um to really you know comfort you in this podcast again like i said we are also on itunes so we will have this on itunes you can go back and look at all of all of the things that we have talked about in the past we have talked about a whole bunch of things we come clean about everything what you see is what you get with us um we talk about a lot of things that a lot of people don't want to talk about and we put it on the internet <laughs> For everyone to hear. <laughs> For everyone to hear, which is um, kind of scary, but in the same sense, we know that it helps others. So anyway, so today we're going to get started. So you do not have to have New Year's resolutions to reach goals. And I'm sure you looked at that and you were like, what? You know, what are, what are they talking about? But um, we are firm believers that we don't need resolutions. Yeah. You know, we don't need them every every year. So I don't have resolutions. Karis doesn't. I don't I don't want to have anything to do with them. So we are anti New Year's resolutions. Yeah. <laughs> but hear us out before you shut us down, hear us out and the reasons why. And um I think you might be a little bit surprised. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I discovered a few years ago resolutions were just not really effective for me and just for my life. You know, I would make these resolutions that, you know, that everybody would make. Like there was no meat to them. There was no nothing to them that was specific. It was just like, I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going to go to the gym this year or I'm going to um work harder this year or, you know, just they were very vague. I think that's what resolutions are. They're very vague. Um, I didn't write them down. I did not take these things to to the Lord and say, hey, you know, is this what you want for me and for my life? It was just kind of like what I wanted to do because this is what so-and-so was going to do. And um, if they said it, then I should just go kind of go with the flow. And this is what everybody does. But that does not work. It's just not effective. It's not um, it's not life changing. And there's no growth in that. That's what I was seeing for myself. I was seeing that there was no growth. And it was just the same thing every single year. I was just doing the same it was like, you know, you're in that little wheel, like, you know, little little mice. They're just in the wheel and you're just spinning and spinning and spinning right. year after year. And I don't know about you, but I just kind of got tired of spinning. I got yeah. tired of having these empty words, these empty resolutions. And I saw no change. I saw no difference for me and for my life. Right. Hey, D. D just came on. As you come on, say hello because we love talking to y'all and interact with us, interact with each other because that's what this community in this podcast is all about. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Kara said, you know, it's um, it, it should be goal oriented, not necessarily New Year's resolutions oriented. You know, and I, I'm like Kara, so I found myself going, OK, I need to lose you know, wait, 
or I need to start eating right, or I need to do this. And um, I wasn't really going to God and asking him if that's, that's what I, you know, needed to do. Right. I am a weight trainer, nutritionist slash fitness guru that I used to do that. I've done that for 20 years. So the personal trainer in me is going to probably come out through this um, podcast, but um, it's tough love. <laughs> so it's needed. Thing, yeah, it's needed. The thing is, is that just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you've got to do it. God wants you to be at a good weight. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to eat right. Your body is your temple. But just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you need to do it. Right. That's the biggest thing. New Year's resolutions that we all see is we're going to lose 20 pounds. We're going to run a marathon. We're going to do this for fitness. And I think that's fabulous. I think it's great. But if if God's calling you to do it, if right. he's not calling you to do it and you've already lost 10 pounds and you're you're at a good point right there. Keep doing what you're doing and things are going to keep progressing and keep going. But you spend all of your focus on that whenever you've already done what God asked you to do. It's not that you're wasting your time, but you could be doing other things as well because it's a journey. It's a journey. And, you know, those things start becoming habits. You know, I can remember, you know, some women would come to me and go, I want to lose 50 pounds in 50 days. Well, first of all, that's no, that's not healthy. I'm not yet insane is right. I mean, hey, if you've done it, more power to you if it's been done with you, but it's not healthy. We all know that. And I would find myself going, OK, well, First of all, you've got to put down the glass of wine every single day. Yeah. Second of all, you got to cut out all your cupcakes that you eat. Third of all, you got to cut this out. Is this really realistic? Yeah. You know, because I like cupcakes. Yeah. I still eat cupcakes. We're making cupcakes at some point today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm coming to your house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can be healthy, but you've still got to progress at a realistic rate and at real expectations. That is not real expectations. So what you do is you set yourself up for failure yeah. because then you go and eat that cupcake and you get depressed and you get upset and you're like, why did I do that? And then what do you do? You fall off the bandwagon and then it's so hard to get back on. So, you know, I know I use weight as a, um, as an example, and that's not all that we're talking about here. We're talking about other things as well, but you know, that's the biggest thing that people will go after is I want to lose this much weight and this much, or I want to go to the gym seven days a week. I'm sorry. I, I don't work out seven days a week. I just don't. It's not realistic for me. So what happens is, is whenever you don't go seven days a week and you miss two days, most people, including myself, would just stay in the bed the next day and go, well, I didn't go the last two days, so why do I need to go now? Yeah. So set realistic goals, set realistic expectations. Instead, say, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week because the other four days I'm slammed and there's no way that I can make it. Right. You know, and like Kara said, write them down. Yeah. Because if you've got something staring at you in the face, or get an accountability partner. Karis and I are accountability partners. Every, you know, we talk about lots of stuff and we hold each other accountable yeah. with our goals and everything. So this is not just about weight loss. New right. Year's resolutions is not just about fitness, weight loss. It's about so much more. Right. But of course, those are the things that get talked about all the time. All the time. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and as we were talking and as we were preparing for this this morning, we were talking about even, you know, what the Bible says about this, you know, about having a vision for your for your life of um, goals for for this year. You know, and in and, and the Bible is very clear about these things. Proverbs twenty nine eighteen says, you know, where there is no vision, the people perish. 
and Psalms 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord, right? So, so those things right there are, are evidence for us that, that God is very pro, have a vision, have the goals, write them down. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when we, when we set these resolutions, we don't write it down. We don't have a plan. We don't have a vision behind it. It's just this broad thing for us. And that is probably why, in essence, people perish or people quit or people don't um, succeed at the end of the year because, number one, we haven't committed our way to the Lord. We haven't said, here, is this what you want? And number two, there's really no vision behind it. And I think that's why I transitioned into a word um, because I could I could get behind a word and I could make a vision for that word and I could have a plan. Um, and I was telling Mandy, I wrote down from just from my blog where I wrote, you know, how this is how I pick a word and this is why why I do it this way. And the very first thing, like you've already heard Mandy talk about is I pray and I seek God and I say, okay, God, where is it in this year? So in 2018, which I don't know if y'all still do this. I'm still saying 2017 some, so I'm trying to remind yeah. myself. It is a new year, Karis. It is 2018. But I'm like, okay, God, what is it? What is it that you want to do in my life this year? Where do you want me to grow what are some things that I need to change in, you know, and, and I, I try to talk to God like he is sitting right beside me and he's my friend, you know, and, and just like I'm talking to Mandy. And I'm like, OK, God, this is where I'm frustrated. This is what I wish was different in my life. These are some things that I wish was different. I'm frustrated here. or I'm kind of angry here or, you know, I'm confused here. And I, I, I lay it all out to him. And then, you know, I'm like, OK, give me guidance. What is it that you think for me and for my life? So I'm praying first. And then the next thing I do is, is I want to be challenged. So for some of you, um, it's not a challenge for you to be organized or to um, be really, really clean. Like you've got that down pat. So for you, you don't want to say, I want to be more organized this year. Well, why? Because you already are. Right. right. No, there's no challenge in that. There's nowhere for you to grow in that. Like you, your word, your, your vision for you for this new year is to help you grow, mm-hmm. is to help you change, is to help you do to do some things. Different. <laughs> and if you're already doing something well, don't change that. Like continue to grow in that, but don't change it. Um, and then the next thing is be a little scared. And this <laughs> is a tough one because yeah. who wants to be scared. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to be scared. I I don't like to do things unless I know at the end of it, I'm going to succeed. Right. And that's hard. That's hard sometimes. So, so God has pushed me to pick words and things in my life where I have to have faith. I have to have faith to trust in him and know that he's in control. I'm looking to him. I'm getting out of the boat. Mm -hmm. Maybe like Peter, and get out of the boat and completely fall in the water and drown after I take a couple of steps. But Jesus is going to be there to pick me up and he's going to say, keep going. And I got out of the boat. And I, so you're, and people laugh when I say this, you want your word to kind of make you throw up a little inside, like to be like, (laughs) holy cow, is this really what God wants me to do? Right? Like, is this? Yeah. Right. It's the truth. Yeah. Last year, um, my word for the year was forward. And I was like, Oh my goodness, what is God going to do? Like, what is he about to do to me? Is what I remember thinking. And, um, and I look through this through last year, Mandy and I met, we are doing this podcast. We are talking about, you know, going and traveling and speaking, right. I'm doing a blog. Um, this is past weekend. We did a women's conference where I, I had the opportunity to lead worship and speak and, and I'm seeing all these things, but it was, I had to, to write that down and I had to write this process down and I had to trust him right. and commit that forward way to him. And then lastly, I had to be gracious to myself. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm my worst critic. <laughs> like I know everything that I do wrong or I'm going to do wrong or could possibly do wrong. I don't give myself very much grace when you said a word, it's different from a resolution because you give yourself grace and you understand it is a process. 
-hmm. It is a journey to your destination. And and guys, you're going to have bumps in the road. You are like, it is not going to go perfect. You are going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to sleep late. You're going to forget. You're going to have a bad day. Like things are going to happen and you in, in doing it this way and writing your goals down, goals down and having a vision, you give yourself grace and you understand I'm not going to get all this done and get it right by February. Right. Okay. So, you're still going to be struggling in February to figure it out. Like mm-hmm. what your process is. So give yourself grace. Know that it's a process and know that God is giving you grace. Just like when you have a baby, they do not immediately come out eating solid food, walking, pooping in the potty. However, we all wish they would. I know. Mm-hmm. Right. But they don't. It's a process. It's a part of their journey. And just like this, picking a word, if you give yourself that grace, no, it's going to take time. Like you said, Mandy, it may take till December or January of the next year for you to realize it. But mm-hmm. in doing that, you're giving yourself grace and you're not putting so much pressure on yourself. Right. To get it done today. Right. I have to say, you know, as I was sitting there listening, I, the word, my word for 2017, actually Chris and I both word was abundance. And I really didn't know why that was our word. I mean, and it was like, God just revealed it to me. Seriously. December 31st. Yeah. 2017. So I just figured out why that was my word for the for the year. And so it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in February. It's not going to happen. And then whenever all my heart stuff started, you know, my heart condition, we found out about that in September. I was like abundance. What are you giving me? Abundance <laughs> of health issue. I mean, what? So, of course, I got mad and then. You know, I couldn't figure out why he gave me that word, but it took until December 31st to figure it out. So, yeah, give yourself some grace. And I know that there are some girls here online right now that are listening and that have heard me speak or have been in a small group or, you know, with me. And I say in every single time I speak anywhere, I talk anywhere, anywhere, you've got to be. You've got to strive to be better every day right. than you were yesterday, right. not just on a new year. I mean, I don't know about you. I will never be perfect. We no. all know that. you will never be perfect, but I want to be better than what I was yesterday. Right. Every day I don't <laughs> every day that doesn't happen, but I have to give myself some grace. And yeah. so it didn't just happen on the new year. And the other thing that I want to say, and this is where this tough love comes in and that personal trainer in me probably comes out. You've got to practice self-control. Right. I mean, we teach our kids to have self-control. We teach our kids to not go into church and scream, you know, you know, at other people or scream at each other or smack each other. We or just this morning. My twins were smacking each other, you know, and I'm like, you've got to practice self-control, sit on your hands, do something, you know, pray right, and (laughs) see if Jesus really wants you to do this. But I mean, you have to practice self-control. So we tell our kids to practice this, but we don't. Yeah. So whenever you're setting a goal and if that goal is to eat less cake. Oh, God forbid, if that's what you're trying to do. (laughs) I mean, don't eat the cake. Yeah. I know that I, and it sounds so simple, but it's not, it's not. Yeah. But it's called self-control and you've got to pray about it. And that may sound so (laughs) stupid, but it's really not. God, please help me at this birthday party to not eat this cake or, you know, there's no prayer too small, too big for God. And it may seem so silly to you, but if that is the goal that you and God came up with, if you need to eat less cake or eat less sugar, or if you need to drink more water, practice self-control. Don't take, if you need to save money and you're trying to not go to Starbucks every day, I'm, as you can see, I am bringing up things that I have problems with. <laughs> I 
I did not. I love Starbucks, but of course, me being caffeine free, I don't because of my heart, I go as much. But there was a point in my life where I was trying to save money and not go to Starbucks. So what did I'm serious? I even took a different route to where I had to go. <laughs> whatever works, whatever works. Temptation, and so, and even though. I have black coffee and it's like, what, $2 and 12 cents. I think actually Reese could tell you because she knew <laughs> she was really, <laughs> she heard in the back seat all the time, you know, and she would repeat it as they, that will be two twelve, ma'am come around, you know, but so, I mean, I would have to literally just go another way. And I know that sounds so silly, but don't put yourself in those situations. Yeah. Um, you know, I, whenever I was personal training, there was a lady that she wanted to do something very reasonable. She wanted to be able to fit into a dress um, for her daughter's wedding, which was like six months away. And she really didn't have a lot of weight to lose, but she was kind of at that plateau. She couldn't really budge anymore. And she said, give it to me straight, Mandy. And I said, well, you need to stop drinking your wine every day. Right. And she said, oh, I said, well, instead of a bottle, how about let's go to a glass? I yeah. mean, <laughs> not be, I mean, but this is right. real. Yeah, it's real, real life. Yeah. You know, instead of a bottle, let's do a glass. Yeah. Instead of, you know, there got, it's got to be realistic and you've got to have self control. And that is hard for anybody. It's hard for me too. It's yeah. hard for all of us. Yeah. And, you know, like Karis has been saying, you've got to choose those goals, choose goals God has for you, not what the world has for you. Yeah. And I think that is what tore Karis and I away of New Year's resolutions more than anything. Yeah. Because more of what the world wanted from us, not necessarily what God wanted from us. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think, like you're saying, when you pick something that God wants for you versus the world, there is a process and there is grace. The world, it is get it right or you fail and we move on to someone else. But God and his in and I know, you know, in his gentleness as our father and in his love for us and in knowing that he knitted us together in our womb. He created us with the traits that we have, with the gifts that we've had, we have. And he created us that way on purpose for a purpose. So it's mm -hmm. all knitted together. So it, it is so cool because every year when you're, and I know for me, it's been this way every year I've picked, it's been a different word. It's been a different word for me every year. It's been on different things that God wants me to focus on and wants me to grow, grow in and change me all for a purpose, all to serve others, all to further his kingdom. And so it, you know, and I talked about this a little bit this past weekend. It takes you out of the driver's seat and it puts him and he's supposed to be in the driver's seat. I mean, he is God. I jokingly tell people for a long time in my life, I tried to tell God what to do and how to do my life. Like who I thought I was. I have no idea. Uh, thankfully, he he took me off of that little pedestal <laughs> that I was trying to put myself on. But in doing this and in going this route, it makes you stop. It makes you write down. Okay. The in, in smaller steps. And these are the little things that we're going to do. You know, I'm going to do, this is what I would like to do daily. You know, God, there, or this is um, like, I'll tell y'all, I've written down some of the words that I've looked at that I feel God may be stirring in my spirit this year. You know, one is shine, one is uncomfortable and one is new. Um, these are all three and, and you know, I, I'm, pr I am praying and seeking his guidance on these and all three of these scare me to death because I am fine being in the background. I'm fine being hidden. Nobody can see me. You know, I'm good being comfortable, getting uncomfortable. That just scares the poo poo out of me. I'm just going to tell y'all straight up to get uncomfortable, you know, and then new. I don't, I'm not good with change. Like I normally, land in the fetal position if, if change <laughs> comes in my life, even if it's good change. But these are all words where it takes the focus off of me 
and it puts it on him and on on serving other people and it and it grows me and it challenges me so i know in writing down the vision and writing down little goals even if it's things like you know i'm going to focus on um letting people know this is what, what you know i, I want to speak more i want to do these things more or whatever or um you know encouraging others you know those are you know you write these little things down and, and you can put a date on it and i think even with goals and with a vision it's you it's okay for you to say by june i would like to be here at this point um you know and, and write it down and and here comes june and let's say you're not there but maybe you're further than you were so you can write down a new date and say okay by december this is where i want want to be in my life. Um, I used to have a, a, a business uh, uh, with women and and I would always tell them it's better to um, to shoot for the moon than nothing at all, because even if you miss the moon, you'll land among the stars. So it, it's better to do that than land among nothing. Right. Yeah. So so that's OK. And, and it, it'll grow your faith and it'll grow you. And, and I think Mandy said something that was so important, the accountability and the people that you have in your life is so important to share these these words or these these goals that you have in your life with your spouse, with your accountability partners, with, with those close friends. So they can pray for you. They can encourage you because you're going to have a low moment. Like you're going to have a moment where you're going to say, this is too crazy. This was not of God. There's no way. And they're going to be able to be there and say, yes, it is. And okay. yes, he's put this inside of you and you can do this. Yes, you fell down, but get back up. I'll help you get back up. We're helping each other. We're doing this together. All that is important and all that is needed in your life. So by, by focusing your year this way, it takes it off of you, off of self, and it puts it on him and on others. And it allows others to come in to encourage you, to help you. And it gives you the chance to say, you know, to your friend, what, what's your word this year? What are your goals for this year? And let's help each other because we're here to bear one another's burdens. We're here to help each other carry the load. I mean, God created us right. with community in mind to help with helping and loving each other in mind. So keep all those things in mind. You know, and I just even I'm sure maybe too, we challenge you this week or the rest of this month. Kind of focus on this and pray about this and seek God and say, is this something that I want to do different for my life? So 2018 is different. I still don't have it all figured out for 2018. I'm still writing. I'm still praying. So don't feel like, you know, it's way past January 1st. It's too late for me. It's not. It's not. It's the beginning of a year. It's a new day. Seek him. Pray. Let, let it scare you a little bit. Write it down and, and give it to him and commit it to him. And you might be surprised at how different this year looks for you versus all the other years that you, you've had. And, you know, too, if God gave it to you, it may be fearful. I mean, you may be fearful of it. I mean, everything that I do business wise and ministry wise, it scares the bejesus out of me. Yeah. It really does. But there's no failure whenever it comes to God. That's there's right. one of the processes. And have I had a lot of learning processes? I mean, Karis can vouch for that, too. You know, in her in her journey, we all have learning process, but it's not a failure to God. I mean, he's like, OK, well, maybe that was the wrong direction or the wrong way that you should have gone to get to that goal. But let's pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and let's move forward. Right. So I would much rather him be behind me than the world. Right. Because the world's going to fail you. And again, like like Kara said, community is key. And we have talked about community so many times on here. And we've talked about uh, we have a whole podcast on it. So go back and look at it. But we talked about community. Community is huge. Yeah. If you do not have a community of people that can support you, well, that's what this is. This is what the Purposeful Woman is. It is a community of women coming together that has that are full of purpose. Right. Even if you don't know what your purpose is, if you've got the proper community, they'll help you find it. Right. And that's the thing. They need to be in the word just like you are, because they need to be the ones to tell you those. Just like I was saying earlier, you know, I'm a, a trainer at heart. So um, 
you know, whenever I used to personal train, it was I gave it to you like it was. And that's what you need, even in an accountability partner or, or your community. They need to be those people that can sweetly say, honey, uh, let's back that up a little bit and let's think about that and really think about what the word says. Right. Karis and I both have those people, whether they're at our church, whether they're each other. I mean, and it's not saying that you're stupid. You're not. It's just sometimes we're so blinded by the world that we forget who we truly are following. Right. Yeah. And maybe I shouldn't say forget, but I don't know. It kind of is like we forget because we get wrapped up in what the world is doing or we get wrapped up in what we think we should be doing. That control thing. Yeah. You know, that it's it's control. Yeah. I have to say, um, I've had problems with control here lately, and that's a whole different podcast. And we're going to go into that one pretty soon. So get ready for that one because that one's hard. But, you know, if anything, we just challenge you to strive to be better every day, not just in the new year. Because, I mean, God could do miracles at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, Um in the middle of a tragedy, in the middle of a storm. We talked about the last podcast, you know, finding your joy in the middle of a storm. Yeah. You know, my family and I are kind of going through some stormy weather right now because of my heart condition. But I find joy in doing these things, you know, so I have to find that joy. I have to find um, I have to step out in boldness, step out in in my faith yeah. and do what I know to do and call on God and not the world. Yeah. So that's where we'd like to leave you. It's just challenging you to step out in faith for one. We're always asking you to step out in faith. Um, and two, really think about what God wants from you and for your goals, you know, whether they're daily goals I I mean, seriously, y'all, we all set daily goals. Sometimes I even set hourly goals. I mean, you know, hourly goals, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals. You know, I hear people having five year plans. You know, I'm not that type of person. I can't seem to visualize five years from now. I just give it to God and just say here, this is it. So ask him. Ask him what he wants from you, where he wants you to go. I promise you it's probably going to scare the bejesus out of you. It will. Yeah. But if God's behind you, who else do you need? Right. Seriously, what else do you need? The world is not going to come through for you, but he will. May not be in your time, but he will. Okay. So thank you all so much for being here. We went over our time today, but I think it was a good it was good. good. And we started a little late. So, okay. There so we go. Remember our, that. Our yeah. husbands laugh at us because we go over all the time and we're trying to prove points that we can actually talk less, but I don't think that getting two women to uh, keep it under 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I we think keep it at 35. I'm just, I mean, you know, we're it's I mean, progress. Let's it's be progress. realistic and set realistic goals here. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> They're just going to have to get over themselves. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for being here. We would love for you to join our Facebook group, The Purposeful Woman. We will drop the link at the bottom here in the comments. Thank all of you for, I thank all of you for commenting. And also, if you are wondering what The Purposeful Woman is all about, we will drop a link in the comments as well that kind of explains everything that we do from our podcast to the whole Purposeful Woman movement to small groups. We've got a lot going on right now. So it's very exciting for us right now. We would love for y'all to be a part of it. So we're going to drop those in the comments. Um, but before we go, I see a lot of people are commenting. So let me, um, everybody is saying, Hey, Hey, Jeannie. Hey, Stephanie, Sue. Oh my goodness. A lot of y'all came on. Um, 
what if you were new to the area and haven't met friends yet? Well, you know, I would say, you know, you need to find that community. Uh, that's important. But start here. I mean, yeah. you're here. You're here right now. And um, we have lots of opportunities for you to I know it's virtual, um, but we're starting some more places, small groups in different towns. So hopefully we're coming to your town or either you could start a small group as well. That's the thing, guys. And, you know, we're definitely going to go over here. But um, the thing is is that you don't have to wait on somebody else all the time. You can be that leader. You can be that person that brings those people together. I know it may not be, I don't, you know, it may not be in your character to do that, Sue, but um, it's not in my character either. And it's not in Karis's character either. But God called me to it. So he's going to see me through it. So, you know, if you don't, if you're new to the area and haven't met many friends yet, you know, find your local church, find somewhere where you can meet somebody, um, you know, and that's a good place to start. And of course, you've always got us here. So and if you find yourself and you've got, um, you know, you've got, I'm a twin mom, so you know, my community consists of twin moms, you know, and we're, I don't know, a rare breed. I don't know. We're not really rare, but yet once you meet a twin mom, you're friends forever. Like you're tight because, you know, a lot of people can't relate to you. So find something that's unique about yourself that you could share with other people and maybe start getting out into the community and telling your story and just say, hey, I've got a twin, you know, twins, too. And then you've got a friend for life. So that was a long answer to that. But wouldn't you agree, Kara? Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that that is true. I know um, even when we moved here to Coleman, Alabama, back in 2011, um, and I was going through a really hard time. I was super depressed and I didn't know anybody um, at all, but I started getting to know people and it was hard because anybody that's been through depression and, and anxiety and all that stuff, you totally understand that. But, you know, like when my, my kiddo would get invited to birthday parties, I made myself go or, um, you know, there were small groups, you know, going on through our church or different things through my husband's business. And even though I didn't want to go and I didn't always go. I would start to take those little small steps. And, you know, we've been here almost, let's see, almost seven full years. And I am involved in different groups that are involved in the community and, you know, just different things. It took time. Uh, it was a process. And uh, but it was good. And like even one of my closest friends here owns a clothing boutique. And I just got to know her just randomly going into her store one day and we just started talking and we connected and and it just kind of went from there. So I kind of had to start letting my guard down and my walls down. Yeah. Let people in. You know, I, I, I and we will probably talk about this another time. I kind of would keep people, you know, here, you know, but I had to. I'm in a new area and I had to meet people. I had to get to know people because I knew if I did it, I would go back into this scary hole that I was in and I did not want to stay there because of all the things that had happened there. So I had to, I had to just kind of, again, take a step of faith and just get to know people and just trust that as I did that, God would lead me to the right groups of people and the right friends. And over the years he has, he has put so many just cool ladies in my life from places and groups that I never would have dreamed. And it's just, it was all because of him. And, but I had to let that guard right. that fall down first. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that everybody, y'all are all talking to each other. So y'all got a little, whole little conversation going here. I love it. So yeah, we will finish on that note and thank y'all so much for being here again. Again, our husbands are going to laugh because we ran over, but I think it was a really good discussion. 
And we love every single one of you. And we will be hopping on here again with a, a podcast soon. We're just not sure when. So be listening out. Right. And again, join our Purposeful Woman Facebook group, the main group. And we will also drop a link of telling everybody what we do. That's so right. we will see y'all then. Right. Thank you so much for being here. See y'all next time. Bye.